everyone. Hey, congratulations for sanctioning evil. Thank you. Thanks. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Such a crime drama itself. So let me ask that obligatory question is what initially attracted you to this project? I ladies first. I'll I'll start with Terry. Um, I would have to say the character I really loved and I loved the, the content and the script, the writing. Most 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 excellent. How about for you, Zach? Oh uh, yeah, I I'd never really played a character uh like this and um you know, it's always, as an actor, a pleasure to take on a character you've never played. So that was super uh, big. And then, you know, I, I read it and, uh, you know, like, you know, I was like, I, I love it. I think it's great. I, I was like, I, I want to see see if it works and see if it gets together. And if I can pull this guy off, uh, I'm going to try, you know, which is, I always like a challenge. So that's what I do. <laughs> Tobias? Yeah, uh, it was, you know, I work with couple of the producers before. And then we shot this during the pandemic when we were on lockdown. And we had been on lockdown for months. And we were the first production in New Jersey to uh, to go back into filming in November. And we were in a different world, a different circumstance at that time. We were all kind of expanding and stretching into different areas in our life. And, and this thing came up, like, you want to go back to work? And it was like, oh, hell yeah, <laughs> I want to go back to work. I love it. And, uh, you know, that was like really like the initial kind of thing that like made me want to get on board because we had been on lockdown for so long. And, you know, when the, the idea of going back to doing what you love came up, it was like, OK, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize this was filmed during lockdown. It didn't look like um, yeah, it was filmed yeah, during yeah, yeah. 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 I'm lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this was 20, 2020 lockdown. All <laughs> 2020. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so let me, uh, Tobias, tell tell me about the preparations on playing Reginald here, because you know, in in a way, you have um, a, quite a few action scenes, and you played a soldier before. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, preparation is, you know, I come from the theater, so it's always going to be the same kind of, you know, process as far as, you know, breaking down, reading the script, breaking the script down, thinking what this character, who is he, how does this affect me? But when we finally got into the mix of stuff, you know, hanging out with Zach, immediately we kind of just started getting this kind of energy and this bond going of, you know, and, and the idea is too, is when you're, when you're working, you know, as producers and directors, you don't want to think about the acting. You hire actors so they could do what they got to do so you could go worry about other stuff. So we're, you know, we're counting on. So Zach and I and Kyle, we're all like, all right, you know, this we know that this is what we have to accomplish. And just getting into the pocket with, with, with Zach and Kyle, we started just to work and build on that chemistry and just kind of put the egos to the side and put everything to the rest to do the work. And it just started to gel immediately and just started to, uh, you know, just congeal that way and and just started harnessing that magic. So that's that's pretty much what we did. And uh, the character and the preparation. And I, 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 I could say this to Zach because we had this thing as uh, slow as fast and fast as dead. It kind of played into the film. There was a certain kind of pacing. And I really think that pacing really stemmed from myself and Zach in a way that it kind of gave, we massaged this thing in a certain way that had a certain kind of rhythm and it, it worked out. Zach, would you, would you like to add something about that? Because I'm Zach, I'm actually used to all your action scenes from Black Sail. So I, know, I, know, I don't do it. I, 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 it was, it was one of the, actually one of the things that really drew me to it was like, so many times they're making me do all like that kind of stuff. And I read it and I was like, oh, like he's he's like an organizer. And I never really get to play that kind of role. And so it was, uh, which even though like, you know, I mean, in my house, right? It's like I have kids, like I'm an organizer there. Like in reality, that's what I really spend most of my time doing, trying to guide and, and give rather than do because like my kids play soccer. I'm like trying to give them, you know, some, some help with how to do it. Um, so I, I felt there was there was that in the role and that was, uh, you know, I felt a connection to that. So I just kind of kept going. And obviously, 
Tobias is a, you know, uh, a, a very capable dude and a great actor. And, and I think their relationship grew as our relationship grew. And as we figured it out, they figured it out. And, uh, you know, it, 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 you never really know how something turns out until you watch it. Um, and then, you know, we, it, it turned out great. Like we, it really worked. Everything worked. And, and I was excited about it. So, uh, yeah. you know, happy to be on board, especially like you were saying it started during lockdown. I mean, you can imagine what lockdown is like before kids. I was like, get me on set. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ter Taryn, for for yourself, you you had a quite a different role um, on on this uh, project, uh, playing a FBI agent. Yeah. But uh, also, you all you your character had such a development, especially with the uh, you know those AA meetings. Could you talk about uh, getting the headspace of that character? Yeah. Um... Well, I've attended some AA meetings, so I kind of knew, you know, I kind of knew, like, what that looks like, and um, I also have a lot of friends that are sober and have, you know, and overcome that, so, yeah, and I, I know sort of, like, their journey and just, you know, like, the one scene where she's talking about why can't she just have one drink, you know, basically, like, why can't she just be a normie, um, and I love that part of it, I love I liked it because it's true, you know, there's, there's, you know, people in high positions all around us that also have their, their demons, and I, I like that, it really humanized her to me, and you just saw that she was um, a caring person. Most excellent. Zach, the, the thing, I, every time I see you or meet you, you have your long locks, and you surely clean, cleaned up, and right, right now you don't even have your long locks anymore. Oh, they're there. They're there. Are, are they there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> did did do you have it during the production of this film too? You know, hair and makeup is a different department, and I would just thank <laughs> you to them. Uh, you know, they as I've learned, I can only do so much, and they can only do so much, and you know, everyone works together, and you try to to make things work the best you can in, in every situation. And uh, I wasn't sure how this would work. I actually asked Rob, the producer, when he like offered me the role, I was like, dude, I don't know what to do. I'm here. But, but he was like, get on a plane and come to New York. We'll figure it out. And uh, and we did. And it all worked out. And, you know, I, I, I'm always, I'm always amazed to see uh, what can be done in movies. I mean, you know, uh, certainly at, in, in the kind of steps I've, I've taken as a performer before, um, you know, it, it wasn't, say, as far as, like, pretending to be a robot or something, you know. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it you didn't really like that clean-cut congressman. <laughs> you know, I, it's not that I don't like. I, I just <laughs> self-image, and then there's characters, you know, and then it's uh, you just hey, like. I'm going to tell you, it was day and night. It was like, all right, politician, ah, Zach is back. Yeah. <laughs> now, in in a film like this, um, with, with all three of your characters, do you see yourselves as villains or heroes, you know, given, you know, certain, in a certain vigilante or, you know, law enforcement type of a story? Yeah. Uh well, I'm, well, I think, you know, what I think, what I love about the film and I think what I would love for people to take from it is that what will happen, and people could relate to this, what will happen if you weren't able to provide a means for yourself? What would happen if you system, uh, systematically, systemically were blocked and had obstacles that you couldn't provide? What would happen if you lost a loved one, you know, a loved one that is taken from you? And then not only a loved one that's taken from you that might have been murdered or killed or snatched, but then you're talking about a, a child. So I think when you think about those things, it's very relatable and, and, and human humanistic. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a thing that a lot of us can understand in areas of our own lives. Maybe we won't go as far as what Barnes is doing or as far as what they're doing, but these are real human needs. These are real human emotions that happen to all of us. Things aren't just always Black or white is a very 
gray in between space that makes us so dynamic. And to me, that's what this this film uh, really kind of captures that. And when you put against the wall, you know what what would you do? What would happen? <laughs> so <laughs> I agree. Like, I, I I thought about it a lot. Like I remember actually me and Spice were once talking. Like it was like day one or two at lunch. And we were just talking about like, you know, I mean, if you're lucky enough to not have this kind of trauma in your life and someone, you know, attack a family member or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, what if, you know, how would you feel if like, you know, your kid or your mother or your sister or your brother or whatever fell victim to something like this, you might have very different views on it. And as far as good and bad and right and wrong and, you know, villain or hero goes I, I mean i i i think you know ambrose didn't see himself as a hero or a villain he i think he saw himself as doing what needed to get done yeah like, you know and as far as me seeing him like you know i mean i'm not a politician i don't have that draw i don't have that experience so you know i i try not to judge people and you gotta play a lot of people as a as an actor so yeah, you just you kind of put yourself in their spot and, you know, go, right. if that trauma was there, what what would what would that do to me, you know? Right, yeah. I was going to say, you play one on, on, on film, so kind yeah. of like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> but what about for you, Taryn? What, 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 what do you see this char the character you play as in, in the role in the film? Um, I think that she's a, she's a hero in, in um you know, someone that you can count on. And then at the end, you know, you see her make a choice that you don't really know what's going on behind that that choice that she makes. That's sort of a, the secret to it, I guess. You know, I mean, it could be, be many reasons, maybe th that they share that same um, issue together or maybe she has a thing for him or maybe she just feels like some protective, you know, side to her. So she kind of is a hero. And then I guess at that moment could become the, a villain or one of them really vigilante which mm -hmm. i like yeah i think i think it's an important story i mean yes you can't go around sanctioning evil like that but um but you know it'd be cool if, if um more people help save the children yeah yeah, yeah I, I i guess uh the topic of uh child pornography or child trafficking is is sort of a, a clear cut to evil in the case you know, you know I, I i think yeah you're right it's like it, when when children are being taken advantage of and mistreated it's very clear cut and and you know i mean there's a lot to unpack with that whole world but the rather you just kind of look at it as like if you saw a child being treated in this way in person what would you do and uh, you know i i think most good people would step in in some way if they had to you know if you, yeah. you were in the spot and a child was being treated in this manner, you know, personally, I, you know, I've never been in that spot. I have kids, like, don't be mistreating my kids in front of me. You know, I expect yeah. me to be smiling about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all, all for certain, no, no one should uh, mess with uh, you, you guys. Uh, <laughs> and um, what, what, one more subject before, before I leave that to touch upon is, uh, this film also touched upon the idea of how 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 we treat veterans and so on. What 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 do you guys think about uh, you know that little storyline in a film like this? Well, I, I remember talking to Tobias about it being like when we were talking about it. I was like, I mean, this guy he's leaving that court martial stripped of his medical benefits. He's stripped of his retirement, mm -hmm. of everything, and you know. I, that happens all the time. Um, and obviously there are bad situations in war and whatnot. Um, but, you know, when it comes to a veteran issue, like I'm on the sides of the vets always. <laughs> my dad was a, my dad was a veteran and they're not, you know, I don't think that they're treated all that well, you know, especially when they come back from, from war and all the trauma and just what they, what many have gone through, why they even went to war in the first place, like Vietnam war is such a mess. But um, yeah, they're definitely, out there begging for their you know having to beg for their money and their their um their you know everything when they fought for our country and they're so brave and you know 
and some of them had no choice either. But yeah, I don't I don't know if it's a, it's all that great for them sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Tobias, um, last word since you played it on on this film. Yeah, last words or <laughs> that question. Uh, last <laughs> words. Did you say last okay. words? Last words in regards to this veteran thing. Oh, the veteran thing. Um, yeah, it's just another way as an artist, we bring these things to light. And it's just another example of how uh, people are marginalized, how people are slipped through the cracks. Very important people that are important to the fabric of society, people that are important to our well, our well-being. And it just shines the light on a lot of, uh, you know, internal problems, internal uh, things that we need to get fixed and stuff that needs to come to the surface and ha have an open dialogue. We're entertainers. We're entertaining people. We're telling a film and stuff like that. But the, there are people on the ground really, really doing the work that make this thing happen. So this is just our way to be able to um, open up that dialogue and, and, and expose and shine a light on our vets, on um, child trafficking on, you know, sex trafficking, all these kind of things. So, you know, it's great that you could hear from me, but I think the real value comes from people that are actually able to make a difference in that sense. Well said, well said. Well, hey, all you, thank you very much for carrying this conversation about sanctioning evil. I always enjoy films that are very story-based and character-based and you three have done very, very well in this. Uh -huh. All right, Gabe, tell everybody, getting counting on you, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. Won 10 out of 10. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. Let's let's do this again next time. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great you. name. Hey, appreciate it. <laughs> I know.